You're new to FF14 or just new to crafting. Maybe you want to go through the MSQ at a casual pace while still taking care of crafting content. Or you just want a quick way to get levels in crafting so you can get cool gear. We got you covered. Well, for the crafting side of that anyway, we might cover gathering in another video. Here's a quick and easy guide. How to get to level 50 in any Disciple of Hand class in Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. That is, specifically, before Heaven's Ward post-game content. I will most likely put out a follow-up video for what to do if you've completed Heaven's Ward, because it's totally different. But before you get going, you will have to pass the level 10 quest in your starting class to start any other classes, including Disciple of Hand. But don't worry, getting level 10 in this game is about as easy as getting out of bed in the morning. Yeah, okay, getting out of bed is not the easiest thing in the world, but neither is getting level 10. It's just a matter of mild effort rather than no effort at all. Alright, the first thing to keep in mind is that you'll be limited to the crafting classes of the starting areas until you reach the level 15 main scenario quest titled Call of the Sea. This quest will open you up to the rest of the starting areas in the game. At this point, you can choose to start delving into other Disciple of Hand quests as they will synergize with one another. Personally, I think it could be a bit overwhelming at this early stage of the game, but you do you. I'd recommend starting with one DOH class and gradually adding more to your repertoire, because oftentimes you'll find you need crafting materials from some other DOH class. That being said, to start off, you will be able to just craft basic stuff without needing to switch to another crafting class just to fulfill recipe requirements. All right. And to TLDR that last part, start off with one class at a time. Once you find you need crafted components from another class, consider adding in another class to your leveling flow. Your main source of early experience points for the Disciple of Hand classes will be to do the guild quests. There will be a new quest every five levels, and they'll hold your hand a little in the beginning, as you'll be able to accumulate most of the experience you need to get to the next guild quest, just by doing the activities of each previous quest. This will slow pace a little bit around level 15 or 20. If you need materials for the quests, I would advise you to first try buying them from the guild supplier if they have them available, as these materials are super cheap, and it's not worth it to be too tight with your coin purse at this early stage. Once leveling slows, crafting levees are a really quick way to keep leveling up. Here's a list of crafting levee mates organized by level, which you can reference from the first link in the description. If you don't know what levee quests and levee mates are, the quick and dirty is they are quests and quest givers who supply work in the form of repeatable order fulfillment quests. Each starting town does have a levee mate in the starting tavern where you do a lot of quests early on in the MSQ, so that's a good place to check for stuff in your level range. In order to quickly complete levee quests, you'll need the right materials to craft whatever gear the quest asks for. If you level your Disciple of Land classes alongside your Hand classes, you can also use the levee mates to expedite this process and oversupply your crafting with the appropriate materials. This is a bit cumbersome up until you pass the Call of the Sea portion of the game, however, because you'll only have one DOL class available to you, depending on which starting city you chose. Instead, I would recommend buying whatever crafting components you can at your starting city's market. Most of the lower level stuff you can get from the trade craft vendor in each city. In Old Gridania's Shaded Boyer, you'll find Oroyad. In Ulda's Sapphire Avenue Exchange, you'll find Fridera. And in Limsa Laminsa's Hawker's Alley, you'll find Angerand. I highly advise checking for raw materials here, as they're pretty cheap and it will definitely save you a ton of time. For rare materials, you'll have to debate whether to acquire them on your own or buy them through the market board. Either way, I would advise you to analyze your target recipe by searching the item you're trying to craft in the crafting log, then right-clicking the item and selecting Recipe Tree. This will show you all of the materials you will need, including the raw materials to make refined goods from other classes. If you're going to buy stuff on the market board, some materials will also be animal parts acquired from hunting. Acquiring these can be time consuming if you actually go out and hunt the mobs on your own. If you're to buy anything on the market boards at this point, 
This is the stuff you'll want to start with. There are some tribal vendors who will sell some of the materials too, but that's a whole other can of worms we won't get into for now. Next, consider the raw crafting materials you need. If you have the crafting classes required to refine your ores into ingots or skin into leather, just to give two examples, then buy the base materials. Otherwise, you will want to buy the more refined materials as you'll get gridlocked trying to complete your recipe without meeting all of the necessary class requirements. This sort of gridlock won't happen early on, but you will experience it more and more as you progress and the recipes get more complicated, involving more classes. As you're working to fulfill Levit quests and guild quests, make sure that you're also crafting everything you can in high quality. This will give you a little bit of an experience boost, but also it will teach you the subtleties of crafting. All the components that go into a recipe can be high grade materials, and each stage of components will give you an experience boost if you craft in high quality. Furthermore, you can craft extra items to hand in for Levet quests, which will multiply the amount of experience you get from the Levet quest with each additional item. You'll get a ton of experience just doing levees and guild quests, but there's one other type of quest to consider on your quest to level 50. Ixali Daily Tribal Quests The Ixali quests are available near Falgord Float in the North Shroud. Northeast from the Aetherite is the Ixali Camp of Ekadal. You will have to complete the level 41 main scenario quest in Pursuit of the Past, and then go to New Gridania's Order of the Twin Adder to get started on these quests. Once at the Twin Adder's headquarters, you'll talk to a Heer named Scarlet and accept the quest, A Bad Bladder. This will open up the Ixali Daily Quests. You can start by doing a quest for the Ikadal leader, Sezul Totalok, called Reaching for Cloud Nine. You'll be rewarded with the Ikadal Wrist Gloves, which you'll have to equip in order to craft components for the airship that the Ikadal Nine are trying to build. Once you complete that quest, you'll be neutral reputation with the Ixali, which will allow you to accept quests from the Akadal Nine Mansible and Yazel Ahwatan, the Able. If you talk to these NPCs, you'll see that their quests reward different amounts of Ixal reputation. The delivery quest with the Akadal Nine Mansible will give you a whopping 70 points in Ixali relations. You'll only be allowed to do one of these quests per day, however. I'd recommend doing this one to start since it pays out so much more reputation and you'll want to increase your reputation with the Akadal 9 so you can accept more quests down the road. You'll find that you can check your reputation by hitting the hotkey C or going to your character tab and then hitting the reputation tab near the top of your character page. When you fill the reputation requirements for your next rank, either Sezel Totalok or Tataramu will have a new quest for you, which will bring you to the next reputation level. Your daily quest limit will increase as your reputation goes up, but you'll also have more quests available to you from different Ixali, and you'll see that each new Ixali will have quests available that give you more reputation points. The Deliverance quest from the Akadal 9 Mansible will always have the highest reward with the most reputation. Accepting this quest will open up a new quest bubble on the Akadal Foreman, who will request different items for delivery every day. You will be trying to fill that quota, which you can see on the bottom right by fulfilling orders that provide quota points. You'll see that some of the items they're requesting give a lot of experience. There are two ways to consider going about this. Either fulfill the order quickly by handing over the easier recipes, or go about crafting the more complicated recipes so that you can get more experience. Either way, fulfill the quota and you'll get a ton of reputation and a good bit of experience to boot. When you finish your delivery quest, you should go about selecting the other daily quests you have available to you, starting with the ones that give the most reputation points. Accept three at a time from the highest payout Ixal, as each Ixal will have quests that send you to different areas. The quests given from each Ixal will always be close to one another, but they could be far from the other Ixal quests. For expediency, I find it's easier to do all three quests from one NPC at a time until you run out of dailies. Switch to your strongest Disciple of War class to complete the field exploration part of the daily quests, as in order to get the crafting components for the next step, you will often need to fight monsters. If you switch right away, you don't risk anything bad happening. Once you get the materials you need from the field, you can return to whichever NPC you need to return the materials to. 
When you hand over the materials, you will be given facility access. This will allow you to craft components you need to fulfill the Akadal 9 quests. Switch back to whichever Disciple of Hand class you want to level and open your crafting log. You'll see in the quest description that you'll have to be able to craft certain components. When you search those components in the crafting log, you'll see that they can be crafted by all Disciple of Hand classes. The only stipulation is that you have to be wearing the Akadal wrist gloves to craft them. Select the corresponding class's crafting recipe and get to it. The components will also have to be high quality, but luckily these are all very easy to reach high quality on. When you're done, you can hand the items back to the quest giver to receive your experience and reputation points. These quests may seem a little bit much because they're so long-winded to explain, but they're really good to do every day because you don't need to go out of your way to buy or gather materials. And the quests can be completed every day. As your reputation increases, you can also do more quests and buy more stuff from the Ixali vendor. Eventually, you will unlock more dyes, which, let's be honest, if you're crafting your own gear, you're probably going to want to customize the color of your gear by dyeing it as well. Regardless, as you complete Ixal tribal quests and levees, make sure to return to your class's guild every five levels to work on your guild quests in conjunction with the other stuff. You'll get more abilities and gear as you complete these quests, which will make your progress a lot faster as you make your way to level 50. And that's all you need to know to reach level 50 in Disciple of Hand classes for the first part of the game, A Realm Reborn. Thank you so much for watching, folks. If you made it this far, please consider subscribing, as I will be making more FF14 videos. Until then, have fun and stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye